Welcome back. This is part B of this question 12 from the June 2014 Core cool Mathematics C34 paper. And um, part A you will find in the video which is linked on the top of the page here. And it will show at the end of the video. Also, the card at the top will take you to that video. Now, it says here, hence use integration to find the exact value for this volume. So basically, for part A, we have found that the volume of revolution of a curve rotated around the x-axis will be given by this, you know, integral, by this integral here. So what we have to do now is we have to actually find the value of this integral, the exact value for this integral. So here we have to integrate these trig functions, which we do not have actually a, um, you know, an integral for tan squared t, nor do we have one for sine squared t directly. All right, there's certain integrals that we can integrate. For example, if I have the sine of an angle, not the sine squared of an angle, or the cosine of an angle, not the sine squared, not the cosine squared of an angle, I can integrate that directly. Tan squared, the tan of an angle, um, you know, I can differentiate it, but integrating it, I don't have any uh, way of doing that directly. However, we can use identities to rewrite these into forms which can be um, integrated. So, for example, I know that the differential of tan of an angle is equal to the secant squared of the same angle. That means the integral of secant squared of an angle gives me the tan of an angle. Right, so if I can rewrite tan squared t in terms of the secant squared of t, I'll be able to integrate that expression. And I know, so let's start with tan squared t. I know my two main identities that we learned in P2 were that the tan of an angle is equal to the sine of the same angle divided by the cosine of the same angle. I also know that the sine squared of an angle plus the cosine squared of the same angle equals 1. Those are two identities that we know. And from those two identities, I can find an identity for tan squared theta in terms of secant squared theta or tecant squared t, which I can then integrate. So I know that, for example, if I divide each of these terms, both sides of this identity by cosine squared theta, I'll end up with tan squared theta plus 1 equals 1 over cosine squared theta is secant squared theta. So therefore, I can say that tan squared theta is equal to secant squared theta minus 1. All right, so I can say tan squared t is equal to secant squared t minus 1. Now, I can integrate both of these terms. So I can, re I can rewrite this into this form, and I can actually integrate this. And the second, the second term is sine squared t. I cannot integrate this directly, but I can write it in terms of something that I am able to integrate. And one of the identities that we have to learn and know is cosine of 2a. The cosine of 2a. It's a double angle formula. And we have a formula in our formula book which tells us how to um, kind of expand cosine a plus b. And that's cosine a times cosine b minus sine a times sine b. Now that's in your formula book. Right, so we can use this to find an identity for cosine 2a in case we forget it, which is we just call this cosine a plus a. Let's call it, that's the same as cosine 2a. So that's going to be cosine a times cosine a minus sine a times sine a, which gives you cosine squared a minus sine squared of a. So if I want to write this in terms of sine squared of something, I can rewrite this even further using this identity that the cosine squared of an angle is 1 minus sine squared of the same angle. So I can say that um, you know, cosine squared of an angle is 1 minus sine squared of the same angle. I can replace the cosine squared a with 1 minus sine squared a. So I'll have, I'll have basically uh, 1 minus sine squared a minus another sine squared a, which is 1 minus 2 sine squared a. So this identity here, all right, can be used to rewrite sine squared t in terms of cosine of 2t. So here, if I make sine squared a the subject, I have sine squared a equals 1 minus cosine 2a. A bit neater. 
2 sine squared a, if I rearrange this, is equal to 1 minus the cosine of 2a. So therefore, the sine squared of a is equal to, divide both sides by 2, a half minus a half cosine 2a. Now, I can integrate both of these. All right, so if I rewrite sine squared t as a half minus a half of cosine of 2t, okay, then I will be able to integrate that. I can integrate each of those terms. Now, all of what I have here is written in form that I can integrate. So let me put it together. So I say the volume is equal to the integral, 4, four pi times the integral between 0 and pi over 3. Now, tan squared t is secant squared t minus 1. Then I have minus, and I'm going to have a half minus a half cosine 2t. All of that is integrated with respect to t. So now, let me simplify this a bit before I integrate it. So 4 pi times the integral between 0 and pi over 3. Now, I have um, secant squared t. Secant squared t, and I'm going to have... Um, minus or can become plus a half cosine 2t. Okay, that's a minus and a minus there, give you a plus. Then I got minus 1 minus a half, which is minus 3 over 2. All of that integrated with respect to t. Now I've simplified everything, everything is in a form I can integrate. Now I'm ready to integrate. So I have 4 pi times the limits between 0 and pi over 3 of, I'm going to, well, let me integrate it now. So once I integrate it, I don't have to have the integral sign. 4 pi times the integral of secant squared t is tan t. And the integral of cosine 2t is going to be, well, the differential of sine is plus cosine, so cosine is plus sine. So it's going to be sine of 2t divided by 2. So that's going to give me a quarter sine 2t because the integral of cosine 2t is sine of 2t then divide by the difference of what's inside it, which is the 2, gives you divided by 2, so that gives you a quarter sine 2t, minus 3 over 2 times t. My limits are 0 and pi over 3. So now I can put the limits in. So I have 4 pi. This is tan of pi over 3, plus a quarter times the sine of 2 pi over 3, minus 3 over 2 times pi over 3, then I've got takeaway, the tan of 0 is 0, the sine of 0 is 0, and 3 over 2 times 0 is 0, so all of this becomes 0 on the other limit. So now I'm left with the volume is equal to 4 pi. Now the tan of pi over 3, so we say inverse tan of pi over 3, Uh, I've got to be in, sorry, not inverse tan, what am I talking about? <laughs> Excuse me there, this is the angle we already have. It's a tan of pi over 3. We are in radian mode, I just did something silly there. It's the tan of the angle, not the inverse tan of the angle. We've got the angle here. That's root 3, sorry. So that's root 3 plus, and then you've got a quarter times sine of 2 pi over 3. So you have 1 over 4 times the sine of 2 pi over 3. which gives you root 3 over 8, minus, that's going to give me pi over 2, because you're going to, 3 is going to cancel out. So this gives me 4 pi times, now this is um, root 3 plus root 3 over 8, that's going to be like 8 root 3 over 8 plus root 3 over 8, which is 9 root 3 over 8, minus pi over 2. So I guess that's fine, we can leave the answer like that. That's the exact volume, so this is units cubed. We can leave it like this. We could also, if you want to, make this into one, um, you know, like make this over 8 and take out the 8 as a common factor. We could do that, but I'll leave it like that. That's fine. That's the exact value of this volume. They didn't tell us to put it in any particular form, uh, except leave it in exact form. So that's like simplified, exact, for, exact value. And there's the answer to question um, 12 part B. Now this is more kind of related to um, the stuff that's done in, in P3 now. This was in the old C3 fit 4 paper, which is a mixture between C P3 and P4. Um, um, but this is like the integral of these trig identities, uh, trig functions using identities to transform them into forms that we can integrate. All of that stuff is 
taught in P3, so it's, it's very much related to P3. That's why I split this video up into two parts. Part A is more related to P4, and part B is more related to P3, so that way I can separate them according to topics um, when I put them in the playlist. Um, so you'll find the playlist of this. First of all, you find the video which takes you to part A in the top corner here. You find the video which takes you to um, other questions from this paper in this video over here, in this link over here. You'll also find a link to this topic of integration from P3 will be found in the link over here. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching.